I think I was probably the most excited about seeing nature in the wilderness and the fact that I always have wanted to see a bear up close. Welcome to Lessons from Life, the podcast that gleams profound life lessons from everyday life stories. Hosted by Dustin Fenton and Brandon Hill. Welcome back, listeners. This week, we rejoin the conversation with Matt Wright and Jeff Burt Grasick about their walkabout experience. And we're going to hear about a favorite professor of ours, as well as a great encounter with some bears. I want to take some time to remember someone that we all grew to love, I think, on that trip. We had invited a faculty member to join us, Dr. Guy Chase, who unfortunately is, is no longer with us. But he was just really a joy to be on that trip. And, and I know that we all have some stories to share about him. But the thing I remember was he used quite a bit of his backpack to bring a bunch of paintbrushes and paper because he, he wanted to paint on the trip. So I thought he's going to paint these great landscapes and it's going to be awesome. And then I just remember that during the solo time, he and I did not go on solo because you need some people to, to stay back in case of emergency. He painted everybody's wet, dirty socks that were hanging on a line. And I'm like, hi, we're out here in beautiful nature and you're painting these socks. And he's like, yeah, but this is what's unique. So I know you guys mm -hmm. want to share some stories about him as well. I remember Guy sharing with us how he had, in, in anticipation of the trip, he had taken up exercise over the summer before and had, you know, begun by walking and then running through Greenville to prepare himself. And that first day, that uphill, mm. he weren't maybe a quarter of the way in <laughs> oh, <that's right>. before <laughs> Guy made it very well known in his quiet way that it was more than he had anticipated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he pulled me aside and he said, Brandon, I can't do this. I have to go back. And I'm like, you can't, you've got our food in your backpack. We've got to make it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I didn't know him before this trip and I was fortunate because of this experience. We had some really good conversations together. He was so reflective. He was a careful thinker and mm -hmm. it's something that I appreciate in people and I appreciated especially in him mm -hmm. and was fortunate the following summer to have been allowed by him to take a, uh, an independent study art class where it was just me and Guy. Mm -hmm. for a month and a half or two months. And it was wonderful. It felt like revisiting that trip again, but uh, mm -hmm. having an opportunity to really kind of sit at his feet and learn from him. Yeah. Do you think what you're doing now is partially because of that relationship with him? I mean, because you were not an art major. No, no, I wasn't. Uh, it's funny that you ask that. I had, you know, as, as life takes us on our journeys, I had become disconnected from a lot of uh, my Greenville community through the years. And when we had moved to California and I'd achieved some measure of success in my career, I sought to, I thought, oh my God, I hadn't thought about mm. uh, Guy in a long time and how influential that period of my life with him was for me. And I wanted to reconnect. And that's when I found out that he had passed away. And it was just, it was mm. devastating to mm. find that out, to never be able to really have the opportunity to reach out and share with him how profound his mm -hmm. influence was. And I, just to hear his thoughts and to show him what I had, you know, been able to do, you know, so far with mm. my life. Yeah. He would have been really proud of you doing what you're doing now. Matt, you had a close relationship with him. Yeah, well, my, mine is a little different than Jeff because I was an art major at the college, you know, kind of religion and art major. And so I spent a lot of time with Guy in a, in a different way. So, you know, I was in, in Guy's art classes and, and art history courses. And, and Guy, honestly, was one of the most boring lecturers that oh. I've ever been a part of. <laughs> But I say that with all due respect, because in those class situations, he was forced to talk. Mm. He was forced to teach us. Mm -hmm. and, and then when we went on this solo time, I saw the side of Guy that I knew personally, mm. as opposed to professionally, because 
he rarely spoke unless he actually had something to say, mm-hmm. which is really quite different than the way that I've always approached life. Was <laughs> I like to fill up the air uh, with, with words that oftentimes you'll figure out in this podcast that sometimes quite meaningless words. <laughs> so, you know, I, I found that like we walked aside from him being in pain the first day when, when it wasn't so difficult, he really wouldn't speak a lot. But I remember that when he did, we all almost turned around and, Mm -hmm. and I don't remember what he said. It wasn't that it was just this idea that he said something almost poetic, which I think in in a society like we lived in was, was really rare. Mm -hmm. And that actually was who he was. Um, the, The time that I, even though I learned a lot from his lectures in school, it wasn't that that I learned from him. Um, I learned from him and the way that he lived his life. And, mm-hmm. and, and he really was an amazing individual and very unique in the way that he, he listened before he spoke. And he mm-hmm. always was attempting to understand what you're actually saying, which again is so rare to have someone that's really excited about what you're saying and yeah. responding to what you're doing. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever told you guys this part of the story, but part of the experience of walkabout is that the leaders leave a day early to leave the students on their own because by then they figured out how to do this. The leaders go out a day early, leave the students on their own. So Guy and I actually hiked down the very same mountain that we had hiked up on the first day. And we both knew that there was a bathroom at the trailhead and we were very eager to make it to the bathroom. (laughs) And I I remember Guy was like, Brandon, let's run. And I'm like, (laughs) running downhill is not a good idea. He's like, I don't care. I'm ready to be off this trail. So we start jogging down the hill and he's in front of me and he trips over a tree branch and goes rolling down the hill. And I thought, oh no, he's, he's dead. He's broken his leg or something. And he finally stops. I look at him and he's like, I don't care. Let's just keep going. And he popped up and we kept going. I think he had a big old gash. He was bleeding, but he didn't care. He's like, I want to get off this crazy trail. I think he had a great time, but I think like, like everyone, he was ready to to be off of it. I think he only went once, right? Right. That that was the only time he went. (laughs) Well, I understand that some crazy stuff happened after we left. Indeed. <laughs> Matt, yeah, why don't you start? Yeah, I will. Uh, well, I think I, was probably, I, I think I was probably the most excited about uh, seeing nature and the wilderness in the fact that I always have wanted to see a bear up close. Uh-huh. And um, not, you know, not up close in the sense of really close. <laughs> but I, I had wondered, and I've been saying, I remember saying to the group numerous times, like, oh, I can't wait to see a bear. I mean, this is really why I'm here. And so uh, when the, the leaders left that night, you know, we're all sitting around enjoying each other. We kind of all go to bed. We had the campfire still going. And so you could see the kind of the campfire through your tent. And I remember looking up and seeing these shadows walk across the tent between. And uh, I looked at Jeff. We were sharing a tent and I and we just kind of looked at each other. What was that? So we opened it up and sure enough, there were two bears very close by. And they weren't the, the largest bears, but they're large enough to scare me to death. And so we basically, they did move away slightly, but they had always told us, okay, if you encounter a bear, you just need to make a lot of noise. So the first thing we did was we screamed and we yelled. We had those those whistles, right? Yes, exactly. We had the whistles. Yeah, exactly. And so these bears did nothing. They didn't run away. They looked at us. The second thing they said, well, if that happens, just clap a lot. Okay. And make big noises. And we did that too. And then the third thing they always told us was, well, then pick up things and start throwing at them. So we picked up rocks and sticks and we're throwing at the bears and they're looking at us as they deflect off the bears as if, what are you doing? Which is really the most frightening moment I think I've ever experienced when two bears stare you down at that moment. So luckily they just calmly walked away and and then Jeff held me all night while I was <laughs> So again, that's that was that was for both of us. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, that was 21 years ago. So Jeff, I'd be interested in, in uh, knowing if that story's changed, you know, in my mind or if it's actually what you experienced. <laughs> my memory of it is first of all, like the arrangement of the tents is kind of important. So we had all of the tents were, they were next to one another. They were essentially touching one another on the sides, right? So Mm -hmm. if you, you know, pushed hard against the side of the tent and someone did that in the one next to it, you could touch hands. So we were all really close. We were on the end and there were two tents uh, that the girls were in next to us, right? 
And at some time during that evening, we thought we were going to have the campsite to ourselves, but some person who wasn't in our group came and joined the camp and we showed him where to put his bear bags because like on, on these campsites for your listeners, because there are bears in the area, you have to take your, your packs and seal the food really mm. securely so that hopefully no aromas get out because they have very sensitive noses mm -hmm. and then hoist your bags up on these ropes that are suspended between trees so that even if bears come to the camp they can't you know ransack your supplies so we had all done that we instructed this person on where they were located and we went to bed and we heard noises and i remember getting out and we're like oh it's go time this is what we've been waiting for right <laughs> 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 and so matt I, I remember like this sense of almost like being heroic like being terrified but also we're going to protect our campsite and our crew <laughs> from from these bears and i remember there, there were trees off maybe 50 feet from us or something and that's where we saw a, a larger bear we, we thought it was one and you and I got out and the, the girls were blowing whistles and we were clapping hands and they weren't doing anything. <laughs> and we had our headlamps, <laughs> we had our headlamps on. We're like, what do we do? What do we do? So we started throwing rocks and I remember missing wildly. And, <laughs> and then you landed one right next to the big bear or hit it or something. And it, it, its rump was facing us at that point and it just turned its head around like, Rrr. <laughs> And I remember the fire glinting in its eyes. Oh. And I was just like, oh, no. And that's when we saw, like, the cubs climb out of the tree. Oh, and no. they kind of, oh, they kind right. of ambled off. Mm. And so terrified, we got back in our tents, hearts racing. And they weren't gone. They came back to the campsite and were still walking around. And the most terrifying moment for me was when one of the bears walked in that tiny space between our tents that were sandwiched together. And one of them touched you, Matt. And oh, uh, yeah, that, no, I just yeah. remember that being like, that set everyone off naturally. Wow. It's amazing that you say that how much is I've lost to that story and it brings it back so vividly. Mm -hmm. I think it's really a little PTSD. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because well, yeah. it's it's kind of like a kid hiding under the covers, right? You're like, this is gonna th these sheets are gonna are going to protect me from the monsters, and that's how we were with our tents. But you realize it's <laughs> it's, a piece of vinyl. it's not very thick. Do you have do you have trouble going to the zoo now with that uh, bear PTSD? <laughs> no, I'm okay. I, I just, uh, okay, I just okay. skipped the, well, I skipped the bears can completely oh, and move around, right? So yeah, I, I still go to, the he, zoo. to this day carries a bear whistle. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I just remember the next day when we came back to pick you up from the trailhead. You guys were just so excited about the fact that you'd you'd seen this bear. And I actually didn't believe you at first because the whole time I'd be like, I want to see a bear, I want to see a bear. And we never saw one. And then for you to have, have that experience after I had left, I just thought, I thought it was fun. Well, just so you know, Brandon, uh, it was fake. We made the whole thing up. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've just kept our later. stories pretty consistent over <laughs> yeah. all these years. I we we actually so. planned the whole thing out. We were assuming that you were going to have a podcast 21 years later. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, the internet hardly existed back then, you know? And that's part of what I'm thinking about. The college students I'm working with now, most of them weren't even born when this was all happening. It just blows my mind. Well, I really didn't need to hear that. Let me... I'm gonna, <laughs> Seems I only remember the ones where I come across as the heroic person. <laughs> well, seeing as we started the conversation with, uh, you know, a, a poo-covered butterfly on my nose, it's only fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, it looks like we're starting to run out of time. It's been so good to spend some time together uh, reminiscing, and it's crazy that this has been over 20 years ago this has happened. But I think that, you know, Matt, you saying, man, I don't remember that, but now it's coming back to me. I think that's part of the point of our podcast is that these things that happen in our life, if we remember back on them, we can learn from them. We can learn from the things that are happening in our own lives, whether it's recent or many, many years ago. And so it's just fun to spend time together, think about these things together, and of course, remember Guy Chase. So. Mm. Thanks so much for joining us on the show. And hopefully maybe we can go offline and spend some more time together reminiscing. Thanks so much for having us, Brandon. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Take care, guys. Thanks for listening to Lessons from Life. We hope that you have learned a lesson today that will help you to be more fulfilled in life's journey. If you were inspired by today's episode, 
please subscribe and review. You can find Lessons From Life at LessonsFromLifeForYou.com. That is with the number four and the letter U. You can also find links to all of our social media on our website. We would love to hear the valuable lessons that you have learned from your life experiences.